Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk, a listener-supported ministry. In fact, thank you so much for being part of that support for James Dobson Family Institute. Well, welcome to Family Talk, the broadcast division of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. I'm Roger Marsh. Did you know that one billion people around the world live with disabilities? And many of these individuals and their families live in pain and despair. Our guest today here on Family Talk is familiar with that pain and suffering that accompanies physical and mental challenges, both for the disabled as well as for their families. His name is Steve Bundy, and he is Senior Vice President at Johnny and Friends. Steve is also the father of a son with special needs named Caleb. In 2018, our co-host, Dr. Tim Clinton, sat down with Steve Bundy to talk about disabilities, suffering, and hope. With all of the despair and pain that continue to characterize our world, we decided that it was a good time to re-air this important conversation. Here now is Dr. Tim Clinton, along with Steve Bundy, on today's edition of Family Talk. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Tim Clinton, president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, sitting in for Dr. Dobson today. And on Family Talk, we've got a special in-studio guest, Steve Bundy. Steve's the senior vice president of a very dear ministry to us, Johnny and Friends. Steve, thanks for stopping by. Oh, thanks for having me, Dr. Clinton. It's my pleasure to be here. You know, Steve, uh, interesting. Well, tell us, give us an update on Johnny and Friends. What's been happening at the ministry and and uh, your role? Sure, absolutely. Well, Johnny and Friends continues to grow and thrive. The Lord blesses us uh, in ministry programs around the world, Uh, everything from our wills for the world to our Christian Institute on Disability. We continue to see many, many families affected by disabilities come to Christ, uh, be inspired, be encouraged, become included in the church. And uh, you know, Dr. Clinton, there's no shortage of need in the world. Um, And in that regards, uh, the vision and the goal is always before us, and that is to expand his kingdom to people affected by disabilities all around the world. Uh, And the Lord's blessing the work that we're doing. Do you think the church is becoming more aware of and tender toward uh, those with uh, challenging issues and disabilities? You know, I do. We see that. We see that happening. Uh, In our Christian Institute on Disability, we've developed curriculum that's specific for the church, that's specific for Bible universities and seminaries, uh, recognizing that God wants the church to be prepared at the grassroots level where uh, lay people and volunteers and parents and so forth are working in the ministry. But he also wants to prepare the leaders, the leaders of today and the leaders of tomorrow who will fill the pulpit, uh, who will be teaching from the Word of God, that they have a heart and a mind and a passion for people affected by disabilities, that when they get to the pulpit, it's not a matter of should we minister to people affected by disabilities, but their question is, where are they? Because Luke 14 says, make my house full fill my house with people affected by disabilities. So in that regards, we see the Lord waking up the church, still a lot of need, still a lot of work to do, but we do see the church waking up. So it kind of makes sense then, Steve. I know you wear many hats, have a lot of responsibility, but one of the projects you were involved with was a Bible project called Mm. the Beyond Suffering Bible, a gift. Yes. A gift to the church, especially to those who are hurting. Mm. Steve, tell us a little bit about how it came about and... uh, What's in it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, thank you for asking. This is one of the most exciting projects I've ever been a part of. I have the privilege of, of helping oversee the project, uh, work on the executive committee with, with Johnny herself, um, and be a contributor uh, to the Bible. So it's very exciting. And uh, we call it the Beyond Suffering Bible because, as you know, Dr. Clinton, everybody experiences suffering. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's the common denominator. We all suffer at some level or some aspect of life. And we recognize that families affected by disabilities have often additional levels of suffering, whether it's spiritual, whether it's social, whether it's physical. There's levels of suffering that take place in families affected by disability. So we wrote a Bible that's actually called Beyond Suffering. So in other words, the scripture recognizes that suffering happens. 
but the presence of God makes all the difference in the world and takes us beyond suffering. So this Bible is very unique. It has a lot of characteristics about it you won't find in a lot of other Bibles. Uh, it has devotionals. It has special words from Johnny. It has profiles of biblical characters and modern characters. Uh, we talk about the presence of God in the midst of their suffering. Uh, we've got connection points that bring the reader into the Word of God. Just very excited about it. Steve, there tends to be, um, among even us as Christians, this way of ignoring or trying to turn away, or maybe we're like kids on a bicycle where we think if we keep our eyes closed for a couple more seconds and open them, everything's going to go away mm. and everything's going to be okay. But there are a lot of people out there going through deep, dark valleys. Yeah. I'm reminded of Job 5, 7, Job 14, 1, man who's born of woman is but a few days and their lives are full of trouble. Mm. Listen, if you are going through a dark, deep valley right now, I want you to turn the radio up a little bit. Steve, uh, you work at Johnny and Friends, but you also, uh, you and your family, mm. you've been on a journey. We have. Tell us a little bit about Caleb. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, Dr. Clinton, like probably most of the listeners uh, today, uh, you know, I had my five-point plan all worked out for my life. Yeah. And I actually thought it was a pretty good plan and uh, wasn't quite sure why God would intervene with it. But uh, he did so in the form of a, of a little boy named Caleb. Uh, Caleb was born to us um, 18 years ago. And um, uh, as new parents, young parents, we did not know what to expect with a new baby, much less. Sure a child born with special needs and, and disabilities. And so Caleb came into our lives, and um, it became, uh, for me, a wilderness. It became a, a crisis of faith is what it became. And this is, my, I, this is my boy. This is my boy. This is my boy. You know, we traded, you know, toy trucks for therapies. Uh, we traded dreams and hopes for caregiving, uh, everything that we, we dreamt about. Uh, the aspirations for who is our son going to be became, you know, needs and crisis for who's going to care for him. And for me, especially as a young man uh, wanting to enter the ministry, uh, trusting God with my family, uh, here I am now trying to reconcile the goodness of God with my son's lot in life. And for me, it became a valley, it became that, that dark night of the soul, if you will, in trying to reconcile how could a good God allow my son to be born with, with disabilities and special needs. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why God? Why us? Why now? Why my boy? Yeah. And so it was a journey that began for us um, with the why question. And what God eventually did with that uh, through a series of uh, conversations, through a series of people ministering to us and our family. Uh, through the ministry of the Word, through the ministry of worship. You know, he brought uh, me personally to a place where um, I turned that why, and that why, by the way, was with a closed fist. It's with the why, God, why would you do this? And eventually he turned that to a, a why, Lord, what is your purpose with open palms? Now, Lord, Show me why. He brought me to a place of surrender to understand that suffering without purpose is meaningless, but suffering with purpose through the sovereignty of God has all the meaning in the world. And I began to open my eyes to the spiritual things that God was beginning to do in our lives through our son and began to see the purposes and the reasons for why he brought my son into this world with special needs that he would become a vessel of ministry to others. And today, I tell you, he is my greatest teacher. He's never formed a sentence. Uh, he can't walk across this room, but he's my greatest teacher. Let's go back and stay on this journey for a moment, Steve, because I think it's such a gift. God's done something in your heart and your life. You see differently. But some people are still stuck in the dark valley. Mm, yes, they are. And they... I mean, they're literally physically sick. They want to throw up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're still crying out. Speak to them. I mean, because you you've been there. Mm, yeah. You see it every day. You minister to people. Absolutely. Who are right there. Yeah. How do you let them know that God's there in the darkness? Yeah. I think what I would say to whoever's listening is in that spot is first and foremost, God loves you. God cares for you, 
and he has a plan for you. Whatever that circumstance is, however deep that valley, however dark it is, there's light at the end, and it's God. He's surrounding you with his love, his tender mercy. He has not forgotten you. But you can hear him saying, but Steve, I don't want this. God, I don't want this. Absolutely. And what you're trying to say is, and let me ask you this. Do you think God weeps with us in our pain? Absolutely. God weeps with us. You think us. his heart's broken? Absolutely. In the midst of all that? Absolutely. And no, one of, the, one of Johnny's uh, quotes, one of my favorite quotes of Johnny is, God permits what he hates to accomplish what he loves. And it's often through that realm of brokenness that God brings us to that place of surrender where we begin to, going back to the palms up to say, okay, I realize now, Lord, I am not in control. I am not the Lord. I am not the God of my life. You are. So here's my life. Take me, lead me, meet me in the dark valley. You haven't forgotten me. You have not forsaken me. You have a plan for me. You have purpose for me. You have steps for me to accomplish. And you will walk with me hand in hand through this valley, through this circumstance, whatever it is. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And that purpose always ends for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. But it's a process. I'm I'm with you, Steve. But you can hear somebody saying, but... uh, I'm so angry, Uh, you know, that my emotion, I just, Mm -hmm. it's all over the place. I'm trying to go there, Steve. Do you want them to take that to the Lord? Absolutely. I'm a firm believer God can handle our anger. Uh, And you know, anger is is normal. It's, It's a natural emotion. And so it's not that anger in and of itself is wrong. It's what do we do with that anger? Now, that that anger can take us one of two places, right? It can take us to a place of bitterness, It can take us to a place of deep sorrow where we don't see any way out and depression is the answer. Or that anger can lead us to the cross. That anger can lead us to the only one who can minister to us, who can say to us, I know you're angry. I know it hurts. Let me love you. Let me care for you. Let me walk you through this journey and let me turn that anger into rejoicing. And that's a process. It's not an overnight yeah. This is a journey. It is a journey. It's not something you just swallow. You know, one night, Dr. Clinton, I'll tell you how I, I came to a place with palms up. Um, Kayla, my son, is, was born with uh, multiple disabilities, autism being one of them. He has some developmental disabilities and, and, uh, and muscular dystrophy. His internal clock is broken, which is true of all of our, or not all, but a lot of our special needs children. And so he would wake up in the middle of the night, often crying, not even sure what time it was in the night. And he's about two and a half years old. I went in one night and uh, I held my son. I rocked him back to sleep. He stopped crying. And I lay there on the floor and I, I was looking up in the ceiling in my son's room. And I had to say, God, why, why won't you fix my son? Now, I'm, a, I'm a typical male, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to fix what's broken. Sure. Well, my son was broken. I wanted to fix him. All the therapies in the world was not putting him back together. And I had that anger. I had that sense of lostness and disillusionment. But I'll never forget that one night as I lay there, tears are strolling down my, my cheeks. I said, God, why won't you fix him? Now, I've never heard the voice of God, but as clearly as I've ever heard the Lord speak into my heart or sense his presence fill a room, I heard the Lord say to me, Steve, my son, aren't you glad I did not require you to be fixed before I accepted you? Wow. And that was a watershed moment for me. I mean, it's probably probably the most revealing time for me to understand the unconditional love of God that in me and my brokenness, hmm. right, in my own disability, if you will, in my own sin and ugliness, the Lord fully and unconditionally welcomed me and forgave me and made me his son. I didn't have to be fixed. It was in that moment I I reached out, I grabbed my son, I pulled him close to me. I said, Caleb, you don't need to be fixed. I love you. I love you for who you are, who God created you to be. Today I've become your father. You've become my son. And from then on out, it's been palms up. That's when I truly came to a place where I said, Lord, no longer why with a closed fist, but why? What's your purpose? What's your plan in this? With open palms. You're listening to Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. I'm Dr. Tim Clinton. 
president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, filling in. And our special in-studio guest, Steve Bundy, senior vice president at Johnny and Friends, uh, dear ministry, uh, friends of ours, and uh, what a story, compelling story. Steve, as we come back here, what do you want our listeners to know about autistic children Mm. and families with an autistic child? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the first thing I would say, Dr. Clinton, is um, always keep in mind, first and foremost, their child is a child first. Uh, they're a child. Um, they're not a child uh, with autism, um, and the autism defines them. Autism is certainly a part of their characteristic. It's a part of who they are, yeah. no doubt about it. And that creates a lot of challenges for that family. But what that family wants you to see is not Johnny with autism as much as just Johnny, right? Yeah. Or or Sally or or James or whoever the, the child may be. Uh, but it, having said that, it is a good and it's important to understand some things about autism. You know, the Centers for Disease Control tell us that one in every 68 children born now are I, diagnosed with it's autism. It's off the charts. Off the charts. It is off the charts. Off the charts. What do you think is feeding some of that? Well, we could get into theories, but we may yeah. not want to go down that road sure. too far. Uh, but there certainly are, uh, I think, some some issues related uh, to uh, predispositions in children, and something's triggering this. And there's lots of theories about that, but what I do believe is that it's more than, as some say, just better diagnosis. We do see real evidence of a significant increase in children. And so uh, we need to be aware of that. Uh, We need to be aware of it in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our churches. We need to be aware of it. I tell pastors, you know, it's no longer uh, if children with autism come to your church, it's when. Absolutely. Because they're there already, most likely, and more are coming. And how are we going to minister to them? Great question. Well, as you know, autism is a spectrum. Um, And one of the primary issues with um, autism is it really affects the way children process information. Sure. And so they are going to process information differently. And because of that, it's going to create some characteristics that, quite honestly, others can become uncomfortable with. Uh, They can be uncomfortable with uh, maybe their social skills or maybe certain characteristics of behavior that aren't what we would call acceptable always in a social setting. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of noises that a child with autism High sensitivity. Makes. High, very high sensitivity to light, sound, you name it. And so I think through some very practical steps, people can become more sensitive to families affected by autism. They can support those families affected by autism. What's the best gift we can give to a family? Acceptance. Absolute, hands down, acceptance. Everybody wants to be accepted, faults and all, right? Uh, So if you ever go anywhere and there's a sign at the door that says um, adults are welcome, but, you know, uh, children uh, with certain disabilities need to be left outside. Well, we would never see that sign. Of course, we would never see that sign. Uh, But I tell you, uh, unfortunately, what happens is the sign isn't there, but the attitude is. And people sense that. People know that. And when their children are not welcome, they're not going to be a part of that community or part of that group or part of that church. Uh, So what we talk about often with churches is the issue of barriers. And often we think about physical barriers, ramps, elevators, these kinds of things for wheelchairs when it comes to to special needs. But what we have found to be the the largest barrier is what we call attitudinal barriers. The Hmm. attitudes create huge barriers. I mean, you can carry someone up a sidewalk, Absolutely. you know, right steps. You but boy, getting through that attitude uh, barrier, that's a challenge. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of what we do is we penetrate uh, churches, seminaries, universities with a biblical perspective on disability and suffering, God's view. We need to support each other Absolutely. and encourage one another. Steve, I, we're, gonna, we're fighting time here for a moment, sure. but I want to come back to the Beyond Suffering Bible because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, here's this gift to us. I want to encourage our listeners out there because I believe in the ministry of soul care, mm. that he's the father of mercy, he's the God of all comfort who comforts us and everything or whatever we're going through Mm -hmm. so that we in turn can comfort others with the comfort we ourselves are comforted by God. Right, right. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. There it is, that God calls us to that. This Beyond Suffering Bible, is this for people who are going through dark times? Mm -hmm. And is it also a resource that I can use to help other people 
uh, what to say when I don't know what to say, what to do Absolutely. when I don't know what to do. The, the answer to that is yes to all of the above. Uh, the Beyond Suffering Bible is, it's a resource. Obviously, the Word of God is the resource of resources. So what we've simply done is take the Word of God and come alongside it to showcase, if you will, the presence of God, the Word of God when it comes to suffering and disability. We do that through devotions. We do it through specific words of Johnny throughout the Bible. We do it through what we call connection points. Uh, These aren't uh, deep theological points. They're practical, insightful points that draw you back into the Word of God. There's resources. Uh, We have certain articles within the the Bible that speak to different disabilities, that speak to suffering. And anyone can use this and be ministered by it or minister to others through it. Uh, it, has, it has a topical index at the very beginning that deals with all kinds of issues of suffering and, and special needs that you can go right into scripture, go right into profiles of biblical characters, go right into connection points just through that topical index. Uh, it has a daily reading program in it for those who like to go through a daily reading program. So lots and lots of features of this particular Bible. And highlighting the word, just passages we love highlighting in the scripture. Word. Elohim, God yes. is our refuge and our strength. Absolutely. He's a present help during yeah. times of trouble. Amen. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that one day That's right. will be revealed in us. And he who spared not his own son, That's right. but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? And nothing will separate us from the love of God. Mm. It's about bringing the word of God That's right. alive in our everyday lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Steve, um, I'd love for you to take a moment and just encourage some people who are listening right now. Mm. Maybe they have an autistic child. Maybe they have a, another challenge in their life. Mm. And it's dark. They're angry. A lot of what we talked about early on is real to them. Mm. Can you give them something to hold on to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm often comforted out of Romans chapter 8. It's uh, a great oh. passage where we recognize that um, we live in a fallen world, and in a fallen world there is suffering. Uh, In fact, Paul says, even creation itself cries out for redemption. Suffering is real. It is a part of the journey, and we're all going to experience it at various levels. And to that person who is in the dark valley, they are in a place where they don't see any way out. I want to remind you that God is your refuge. He is your ever-present help. In times of trouble, he is there for you. And Paul tells us in that Romans 8 chapter, he says in verse 28, he says that God is at work in all these things for your good. I want to break that down for a moment. God is at work in these things, in these circumstances, in these situations. God is very present. Uh, He's not left. uh, He's not at a distance. He didn't turn his back and forget about you and something happened. The devil hasn't taken over. Uh, God is at work in these circumstances, in these situations. And when you lean into him, Paul says, for those who love him, if you're leaning in to relationship with the Father, he works those things out for the good. And you and I can't always understand or see the eternal plans or purposes of God in the moment of crisis because the pain is so severe sometimes. The disillusionment is, is there, and we're not thinking, we're not seeing clearly. But God's promise is he will see you through that and work that out for good, eternal good plans and purposes if you lean into him and let the God who loves you see you through that dark, terrible time. He's at work to bring good out of that for you and for those that you love. And our prayer is that uh, God will take a lot of those why questions mm-hmm. And move you to a place where it's, how, oh, Lord? That's right. Show me how. Yeah. You know what I believe? Mm. He'll show us. Amen. He'll take us there. He'll carry us. Yes. If he has to. That's right. And he does. Steve, yeah. what a joy. Would you please give uh, regards certainly to Johnny and the entire team there, Johnny and friends. And thank you for sharing your testimony, your heart. Uh, we'll pray for Caleb. And uh, Thank you. Yeah, how can people learn more about the Beyond Suffering Bible? Yep. Johnny and Friends? That's it. Yeah, you just go to johnnyandfriends.org, 
And uh, in our store, just click in Beyond Suffering Bible. There's lots of options there uh, for you to look at and to to purchase, uh, both for yourself, maybe a gift for others, a family member, someone who's going through a difficult time, a struggle of some sort. And uh, we, we have received testimony after testimony of incredible blessing and ministry as a result of this Bible. Encouraging and compassionate words from Steve Bundy and Dr. Tim Clinton on today's edition of Family Talk. You know, here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, we are dedicated to providing your family with resources, encouragement, and hope every day. If you've been blessed by the Ministry of Family Talk, please let us know. You can call us at 877-732-6825. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Steve Bundy, the Ministry of Johnny and Friends, or the Beyond Suffering Bible, visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. Well, thank you so much for listening today. I'm Roger Marsh. And for all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, we hope you'll join us again next time for another edition of Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.